Hello. In today's video, I wanted to take you on a little tour of a three-part video series I found on YouTube that I thought was pretty interesting. And it's about repairing a Nissan Leaf battery. And what apparently happened is that there was an individual, uh, this one's in the UK, and they had purchased a Leaf, uh, used Nissan Leaf at an auction, and they had a problem with it and it was not charging properly. So let's take a look together at the video and then I'll share my comments with you. So, fully charged and yet it says 55%. I mean, I say fully charged. Oh, that's interesting. Motor power is limited. Yeah. Or um, something else he doesn't point out here in the video is interesting is, um, you know, at the top here, motor power is limited. And on the leaf as well, you can see the bubbles um, have, uh, are, there's only a double bubble <laughs> over here on the power side for two circles. Normally there'd be the double uh, circle bubble all the way over here to the right. So it's reduced uh, the, very, the power a lot. And of course it's saying that motor power is limited. And then you've got the turtle on the screen and then you have the EV exclamation point uh, thing here as well. Uh, additionally, uh, as you can see on the battery gauge, um, he's got 44 miles of charge. And even though it stopped charging, it, it told him it was uh, fully charged. You can see the car is not indicating it's fully charged. Normally these blue bars would be at the top. And then also, uh, well, he'll point this out in a minute about the uh, longevity bars here as well. It really is dead, isn't it, this car? The bars there, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bars, nine out of 12. But you see, it just won't charge up. So I need to move it off my drive, really. So I'll just skip ahead here to the part that is most relevant for the discussion here, and that is uh, the information he's getting from the Leaf Spy uh, app that he's plugging into the vehicle. And uh, there's a couple things here that are pretty interesting. So he's it says it's a 30 kilowatt hour uh, battery. His state of health is at 70.1 percent, and it's hard to see here, but he's got 292 quick charges. Uh, that's level three DC fast charging, and then he's got 2,527 L1 L2s. And then if we skip ahead a little bit more here, you can see uh, on the Leaf Spy uh, app, it's showing that there's one cell here. It says weak cell number 13, and that one cell is quite a bit lower than the rest. All of the other cells are just under 4.1 volts. And you can see here, it's also showing 432 millivolts difference overall from the highest cell to the lowest cell which is a pretty big difference. So that says here that there is one bad cell in this battery pack and it needs to be replaced. Okay, so if we skip forward now to his part two in his video series, this is when they're uh, doing the repair. So let him do his own introduction here. I'm here at the EV workshop in Hern Bay in Kent. And they're gonna do a battery cell replacement on the Nissan Leaf. So, it's quite a fiddly procedure. They have to get the battery down from the car. They have to open up the battery pack and then they have to find the faulty cell, which is number 13, which is easy to, easy to remember. They've got to find the faulty cell and then replace that with a new module or a, as new module as they can get from the second-hand market. Okay, so it sounds pretty simple. Uh, I mean, you do need a workshop for this though. Uh, the, the battery in the leaf is uh, underneath the vehicle and it is bolted up and connected on. But if you do have a, access to a shop or someone has a shop that has a, access to a lift, uh, they're gonna show the procedure here. And it's actually uh, not too bad of a procedure if you compare it to other types of things you can do on a gasoline vehicles. some of those uh, procedures. If you're swapping out a clutch or a transmission or something like that, it could be quite involved. And this one is, uh, I wouldn't say harder, it's probably easier. Uh, than some of those uh, things there. So uh, they show the whole procedure here and I'm not gonna go through it if you want. To, I can put a link below to show um, the, the procedure. But essentially, you know, there's a section here where they're disconnecting all the connectors and then they're underneath the car and they're, um, you know, unbolting the uh, main battery pack and then they lower the car. That This part here, they've got the uh, battery pack that is 
um, all removed from the vehicle and then they just have to sort of open the lid um, and uh, replace the, the faulty cell. So then the next step is to find the faulty cell. Remember it was number 13. Okay, so they've got to remove this back block here. So there's quite a few different uh, connectors and, and uh, nuts to remove. So they do that and I'll just continue to scroll forward here as they do that. Uh, okay, and this is a cool shot here where they've got, you know, the, the back part of the battery pack has been now disconnected from the main battery pack and they've got it, uh, you know, hung here from this engine lift. Um, and then now they've got to do a little bit more disassembly to get into that pack. And then they've got to verify that they're finding the right cell here as well by cell. checking the voltage. So we've got one, two, three, four, which should be one of, the, one of these two in here. So we've got, there we go, 2.86 volts. So that's our, that's our dead cell. That's, okay. that's the problem one. And then the neighboring one, 3.88. So our, our dead cell is one half of this module here. Right. So we're gonna okay. strip down this pack and change this pair of modules. Great. So they've identified now which cell it is and uh, they'll just have to disassemble it here a little bit more. So there's a bit more of a disassembly procedure and uh, they do that. And then at the end they, you know, of course they reassemble the, the pack back together and there it is in its reassembled format already, so they've already replaced the pack. Uh, what they also did in the middle uh, here, they did show a little bit of a process where they had the replacement uh, battery um, module that they had bought used on the used market, and they had to charge it up to the right voltage so it matched that 3.88 volts that the rest of the pack had. So they did that as well. Um, there's further details here, but that's what they had to do. And now it's a matter of reassembling the vehicle uh, back together and then they switch it on so here here's the the part where the vehicle wakes up again from its sleep see what we got and look at that so we will still have to plug the diagnostic tool in and delete any um, history codes in there um, but the the you can see already we have a range of 62 miles on there um, previously on a full charge, bear in mind this battery isn't fully charged, on a full charge the customer could only get 30 miles out of this vehicle um, and we was actually quite surprised that it would still run um, and they were having to clear the code using leaf spy um, every ignition cycle otherwise they weren't able to drive the vehicle. The battery was actually that low uh, prior to starting this job that we had to push the vehicle onto the ramp. Um, so there you go. So um, still got some final checks to do and the plastic under trays to refit. Um, but yeah, looking like a, a fix. One of the other things that he had mentioned there, but uh, I noticed as well, is um, first of all, uh, you might recall there's the uh, turtle icon here, the two orange lights turtle, and then there's also the EV a uh, problem uh, icon it's, it's missing off the dash so those have cleared and as well it's maybe a bit hard to see on this uh, image here but you can tell that uh, you know again it's not saying that motor power is limited and also uh, just by the thickness of all these circles here you can see that it's got the full motor power available back to it again and so they'll need to still recharge it fully because the cells were only at 3.88 volts, which is, um, you know, about three quarters full. So they'll have to recharge it. And in the next scene here in the next video, they'll talk to the owner about his impressions of how things have uh, improved now since they've made this change. Oh, also, I should mention, uh, they did flash quickly the cost of this. And I think that's one of the most important things in this whole thing. Uh, cell replacement costs, of course, they say here it varies massively between car brands and types, but uh, you can expect it to cost anything from 700 pounds to 1400 pounds. So that's, you know, 700 to 1400 dollars, uh, US dollars approximately. I don't know my exact conversions there, but it's, it's around the same amount. So <clears throat> um, that's uh, really one of the main points I wanted to make with this video is to say, you know, uh, there's these rumors out there that if you have a, any kind of failure in your battery 
that it's gonna cost you 10,000 to $20,000 uh, to repair it. And the fact is, if you're replacing the entire battery pack, that could be the case. But in this situation, you can see that the, the battery is very modular and you just have to take out the defective module and put a new module in. And you might say, where do you get those modules from? And they don't think they go into that here, but uh, they can be purchased from auto wreckers or from eBay or other used sources. So you wouldn't buy a brand new cell to put in because it'll still, it won't really balance uh, with the rest of the car. You'd want to get one that is similarly aged and um, replace that one. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the aftermath after it's been repaired and return back to the owner and get some comments from him. We first met on a very rainy day in we did March, I think March. it was. Okay. Yeah. And Tony's leaf was on the back of a tow truck. Yeah. That was quite a surreal night, actually, wasn't it? It was. It was. Yeah. So this is Tony's first experience with an electric car. It's got to be the worst EV experience, isn't it, that anyone's ever had? I think so. I mean, uh... I don't know, maybe your viewers might tell us otherwise, but I think for me personally, it was a very, very, put a very bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. One which I think I've still not quite maybe recovered from. So do you find every um, time you get in the car, you kind of have a anxiety? Um, a little bit, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe a bit of PTSD still there, yeah. I don't know, but I think definitely, you know, it's like I, I'm constantly looking at uh, battery percentages and ranges. Yeah. Tony bought this leaf from an auction house called BCA. Firstly, why did you choose a LEAF? Sure. So I think I was curious about electric vehicles. Um, I'd been watching a few YouTube videos. Knew you were on YouTube and talked about electric vehicles. I was curious about it. We've got a driveway. We've got the setup to be able to charge a car, you know, quite easily. Realized that electric vehicles, the, the, the price now had kind of gone to um, very affordable prices for us. And I think for me, it was a case of I just wanted to kind of try it. And I think my kind of thought process was, well, why don't I um, look at the, the kind of best kind of starting point, which seems to be like a Zoe or a Leaf, and see what you kind of get for your money. Realize that the Techno range, you know, comes with all the kind of bells and whistles, which is all the kind of things that I quite like a used car. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, he's uh, doing what uh, a lot of us have done in the past is looked at what's an inexpensive way to get into electric vehicles. Maybe there's a used one available. And he went the, the I guess, probably the cheapest route, which maybe is the riskiest as well, is buying his car from an auction house. So I probably wouldn't recommend that as the choice if you're wanting to get something with a warranty. Um, but if you do buy from uh, you know, a reputable seller, they should be warrantying the, the vehicle. And I guess the other thing is for Leafs in particular, it would be advisable to run that Leaf Spy app on the car first. In this case, he wasn't able to do that because he wasn't able to, uh, the auction uh, you know, didn't uh, uh, do that for him. And he likely was not aware that you could do that as well. So um, it would be good to idea to take a look at those uh, battery health situations. And, and if he had looked at the battery health and looked at the cell voltages prior to purchase, uh, it would have immediately jumped out at him and shown that cell 13 was a problem. But if you can get it for a really good price, then uh, that repair, which, uh, you know, for people are thinking is 10 to $20,000, really in this case, he was 700 pounds to 1400 pounds to replace that cell from that uh, EV repair shop, which is uh, quite reasonable and uh, it brings a lot of uh, confidence in the ability to, to maintain and repair the vehicles going forward. So I really uh, enjoyed this um, series of three videos. I'll leave a link below to the series so you can read the, or view them in their entirety. Uh, they are quite lengthy and they do go through a lot more details. But I thought it was uh, interesting to see how easily they could fix the vehicle and it got re back returned to him. And also, you know, if you've ever done any kind of major car repairs on a, a gasoline or diesel vehicles, uh, you'll know there's a lot of uh, grease and oil and everything else. It's a really dirty kind of a job. And in this case, doing the repair of the electric vehicle, the, the most uh, dirt they were getting is kind of some dusty uh, dirt. Uh, there was, um, you know, no, that wasn't greasy and oily and dirty and drippy. So it's uh, actually, I would say, easier to repair an EV uh, at least this one in this particular case uh, i think every ev uh, their battery systems are different 
and they're going to repair differently and like the comment said on the video uh, the costs are going to vary dramatically depending on what kind of vehicle it is uh, i think for example if you were to pull down a tesla battery pack and try to repair it um, i think their battery packs uh, because they're made up of the little cells are a little bit more complicated to repair but uh, i don't know maybe i've never repaired one of those um, and i'd be curious to know if anyone here has uh, repaired any other battery packs or any leaf packs um, and um, uh, it's uh, interesting to see how uh, these uh, third-party repair um, options are available. I'm sure that if he took that same car to Nissan, they would tell him we need to replace the battery pack because I know that Nissan in their dealerships is not definitely not opening up battery packs. There is an element of danger, of course. Uh, there is high voltages, and uh, once you've got that many cells put together, um, if you touch the wrong parts, you can certainly cause yourself uh, a severe injury or death so you want to make sure to know what you're doing but um, this video really shows how simple it is to do that and um, you know takes a lot of the I would say scariness or apprehension maybe someone may have about purchasing an electric vehicle if you're worried that you know it works fine one day and the next day you're presented with a ten thousand dollar bill to replace the battery uh, the reality is there's other options available out there the question would be then trying to find a shop that can do that and whether or not there's one that's conveniently located to you because if it's not running, if the car is not functioning, you'll need to somehow get it there and that might involve the tow truck as it was in this case and uh, can that part can get quite expensive. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting or informative um, and um, if there's any other really interesting videos out there that uh, you've found that are related to EV repair and, and upkeep, uh, you know, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be interested to take a look at those as well. Thanks for watching. And if you found the video interesting or informative, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing for future videos. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.